Hello, uh, this is just a real quick video, minimal editing, but um, what I thought I'd do is actually uh, upload a video uh, to this channel that is uh, actually what I intended uh, to do it with. Um, so it's really just computer stuff, games, a uh, bit of old car stuff, just anything that takes my fancy, oh, audio gear, but um, I thought, I've done a few other videos, but I haven't actually had time to edit or upload. Um, heap of other ideas in the works, so, yeah. This is uh, my Socket 7 computer that sort of re-kicked really off my, um, sort of like, spark to old, or older computers. This one's, you know from my sort of like childhood era which is you know I'm 28 years old this is probably a 97 ish PC 200 megahertz um, Pentium processor MMX all the rest of it uh, it's got the three and a half inch five and a quarter inch drive which I don't have any discs to test to see if that works uh, it needs browning um, just a plain 40 times CD drive. This CD drive is actually the only remaining part than a power cable um, from my very first computer, which was uh, actually a 486 based machine. It had the Pentium overdrive, I think it had like 4 megabytes of memory. And for some reason, when I got it, it came loaded with Windows 98, um, I think the first edition, which, um, yeah, I think whoever had it at the business that we got it from, um, tried to get the most out of it, and yeah, imagine trying to run that on that sort of system, it's doable, but I mean, you really want to have more resources for other stuff. And you know, most of it taken up by the operating system. Anyway, but uh, yeah, we've got these ports on the back. I'll zoom in with my expert camera work. Um, starting with just the typical AT power, AT keyboard. Um, I've got a slew of things uh, in the, this thing. I if I can get my camera angle right. Uh, I've got one of those compact flash um cards so this is actually a refurbed uh cf card uh, what is so you probably can't see it but it says refurbed on it Just ignore my dry fingers i mean cleaning stuff for cleaning alcohol um matrivox millennium 220 card just a d-link um nick t100 usb it's useful for uh, some things, um, but now that I've got this compact flash card, there's less reliance on that. Two serials, I don't have any parallel, um, and a Sound Blaster 16 card. So what I'm going to do today is, when I put this thing together for the 10th time, because um, I swap parts out of this box, like no tomorrow, the CPU heatsink uh, that I had for it on this board was pretty noisy, the fans buggered. Um, but luckily I got given two of these brand new Socket 7 compatible, Socket 370, whatever, um, compatible heatsinks. And so what I thought I'd do is replace it. It's a pretty, uh, pretty simple job, nothing too amazing. Thermal paste, whatever brand you like, this is just what I've got. Screwdrivers, Phillips flathead, Phillips, sorry, is for the case. Flatheads to help put the clip on. This one is pretty warped, although it's hard to tell on that focus. That's, I've had it for a long time. Pliers because, yep, isopropyl, um, cleaning alcohol, paper towels, thermal grease. It's going to be a pretty boring video, to be honest. But, but yeah, typical AC case, six screws, this whole thing slides off, which is a pain to get back on and line up. But 
Uh, there it is. Have a look inside. So I've gone to old cheeky cam, but uh, there's my Sound Blaster card, USB header for the uh, serial, uh, the NIC, and the Matrivox card. And of course, the best thing is. I think the best purchase I've ever made for one of these machines is that um, compact flash IDE. Just, it, it is a lot easier to get stuff onto the um, onto the hard drive without that in there. And of course, this is what we need to take out. Uh, so I've just brought the camera in. It's as close as I can get, I'm afraid. So, this thing thankfully just has a wee gun. Molex header on it. Just gonna get rid of that. Get my flat head in there. Literally just push down and just pop the clip off. Give it a wee twist so I don't rip the CPU out of the socket if it gets glued. I've recently just sort of put this together so um, yeah. And there's the beast. MMX blah 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 socket 7 amazing. Um, I haven't actually taken the CPU out of this before, all I've done is swapped. Actually, I don't even think I redid the thermal paste on this. I can't remember. But um, either or, this is our replacement. I'm just going to clean up um, the top of the CPU. And there's the new one. Old one, new one. God, it's quite a bit, bit of a difference on them. Yeah, you can definitely tell this is, because this covers socket 370, which, you know, a lot more powerful. So, um, yeah, obviously you get a better um, fan. Um, the other thing I've just realized is I don't think this computer has a header for a fan, but I'll have a look. I'm just gonna come in here with the old alcohol. You can, you don't have to have this little dropper thing, I just use this on my Walkmans and things like that. And there it is pretty much. All clean. Fancy. Uh, so only problem is this um, fan. Um, it has a header on the motherboard, but I can't fit this plug in between it because there's two capacitors. Um, and given this is just a 12 volt fan, um, I'm thinking I'm just going to cut that off the Molex adapter and just graft it into this. Um, so I can just, you know, use that. This fan is it's noisy um so i mean the heat sink will be useful for um other you know less powerful computers that might just need a heat sink and just use passive cooling so you know like 486 stuff um just isn't nice to have so i mean like this is still useful um i could always just find another fan for it like i could have done but um you know i've got this whole thing so um, yeah, I'll just graph that on with my soldering iron. So I'm going to be a little bit ambitious while the uh, soldering iron is heating up. I can reuse this heat sink on quite a number of, you know, other socket 370 computers and things like that. So what I thought I'd do is preserve this fan header by um, just popping the pins out. It's just easier said than done. That's that idea. <laughs> That's okay. I can fix it. Strip some wire off both sides. There we go. Wires are separated. And then once again, I'm just going to come in here with these things. Take the wire off of this sheathing. Cool. And then usually, what I'm going to do is get some um, heat shrink tubing and just graft this all in place so 
Sweet. Okay. What I'm going to do is just sort of fix my um, mistake that I made. I'm gonna do this. So I just you can do various ways of getting these wires so, together, but I like to have a bit of length um, on them. As I said, there's like there's heaps of different ways to do this, but yeah. And I'm using um, 60 40, 60% tin, 40% lead, I think it's pretty it's pretty standard. Um, I've just realized to put my heat shrink tube on the wrong side. So yeah, what I do is I just take, it's really hard to see that I got the wire and I get it right up and I just sort of it requires a bit of precision finger work. Just keeps it together, helps you solder it. I mean, yeah, if you've got those little core helper things, um, that is so much easier than doing this. But what I'm going to do is slide that guy over. Get completely the wrong tool for the job, which is just the slider stick. There are better tools that you are supposed to use with it, but you know what, it does work. The idea is not to burn it, but just like heat it. Slide that guy over. It's probably a bit too long, but that's alright. So, I really need a heat gun. I need a lot of things to be honest. A bit of soldering iron, some bit of skill sets, some practice. But each one of these projects I do, they get a little bit better. I'm, I'm used to just fixing uh, like Walkmans, whether it's just soldering. One call. And we have, I believe, ground on the outside. I'm sorry, guys, I can't see. But this, this is a really long video for just this. Fragile little pins, these guys. I've just noticed. And then get this guy. It's also useful to have nails. Just to put a bit of spring tension on the uh, clips. No. I just mean so if I need to reuse this, I've got both options. That end and this end. Right, now that I've diverged on that far too long, let's get it in the computer. Cool. Just gonna put just a little bit uh, in here. Not a whole lot. It's probably a bit too much. This is super, an extreme computer. Um, I have to get the back clip on first. 
It was a bit easier without the fan on, I tell you that, when I just tested it. There we go. I've just sort of smeared thermal compound over everything. And I'm just going to use my finger and just push down. Clip it on. Give it a wiggle. That's in. And there, looks and then my little makeshift header is going to hide in there. And then it's going to just plug into this floppy disk power, which is plugged into my, um, uh, what do you call it, the card. Fan clearance, good. Pretty loud, but to be honest, it's um, a lot better than having to go. Ugh. Sweet. So that's all together. Oh, well, that's just one little job done. Next is this poor mechanical keyboard. Yeah, I've been working on that key. I managed to get the uh, D one a bit better, although it's a little bit. So I need to figure out what to do about that. We can sort of try to clean it and work the, the switch, but I think it needs actual like disassembly. Mechanical switches. Need to put some drivers in. That should be good. The so one thing about these um, adapters is they're, um, you know, compact flash adapters. They're quite quick, which is nice. So yeah. All right, put the lid on, and this one's signed, sealed, and delivered. Thanks for watching.